Hey guys, my name is Octoman and today we are in tutorial number 9 of my current turn-based battle system tutorial. Um, in the last part we were able to make all the buttons work and send the heroes into the perform list. Also, we added the selectors to make sure that the player knows which of those characters or heroes is the active one we can place yeah, attacks and stuff in. Today, we are going to make the heroes move like the enemies already do. So, we see them performing their actions, walking to the enemy, doing something. In this case, we just wait for a moment and then we hop back to our original position as the enemies already do. So, let's get started by open the hero state machine. So, in the hero state machine script, I'm going to zoom in a bit for you to see this a bit better. We need several po um, several variables in here. The first one is going to be public. Um, this is stuff for the IE enumerator you might remember. So, I just... Uh, Numerator. Um, we just need to add, and the first one is going to be public of type game object, and this is going to be the enemy to attack. This is, um, as you may remember from the enemy state machine, the enemy we pass into, and which it, we take the um, the position of, and to know where to walk to that enemy we just selected um, inside of the battle. The next one is going to be... Uh, we, will, we will go over to that in just a second. So, when we head over to our enemy state machine, we will basically just take the iNumerator uh, time for action and copy this one completely. Also, we can take move towards enemy and move towards start and copy all of that stuff. I don't like to write all of that right now. We just fiddle around with that. So make sure you have that completely done in the previous tutorials. So the next uh, stuff we need is a boolean which is called action started. So I just copy this name in here, go up and say private bool action started and we set this one to false like this. The next one we need is we don't have hero to attack but we already added enemy to attack so we need to change all of those um, in here. We can go over and copy this, double click then we will select the part of the code and then we can just paste in the stuff we need like this. The next thing is we need the start position which is of type vector 3 so we go up in here again for the i enumerator and so on. We say private, even if we don't need to, but we say private start position. Oh no, it's a private vector 3 called start position. I hope I typed this one right. Position. There we go. Double click this, copy, and in start I say start position, or I just paste this one in, is going to be equal to transform dot position. Whoops. I don't, can't type today. There we go. So now we take, when we start the battle, we take the start position and store this one, or basically our current uh, transform the position of that hero, whichever is using that hero state machine, and store this one in start position. So in here, we need to say first position is going to be start position. So copy this one over too. If you have a typo, don't forget to change everything depending on that. Also, in the move towards enemy, um, we can basically just don't need to rename this one we, since it's a private bool and yeah, nothing else will happening. I But I go over and copy anim speed, which is going to be the speed to walk to, uh, to move towards a point we are targeting and we can set this one in the top of course too. So we say private move speed. Ah, uh, no, it's not move speed. Uh, but it's going to be of type float and it's going to be anim speed. There we go. And we set this one. In my case, I like to 
uh, set this one to 10F. Also, I go into the enemy state machine and change this one to 10F2 if I haven't, or if you haven't already. The last one I just have 5 in here, but I found this is not uh, speedy enough. Okay, so now we have the complete type for action um, I enumerated done. Basically, we just copied over all that stuff, and we also have a move towards enemy. The only thing in the I enumerator once again at this one is uh, or at this one here, I just can go over basically and rename this one to enemy position, and I will go over and just copy and paste this in here. You don't need to since zero position will work too, but to avoid confusion later on. Also, since we're going from the right to the left, instead of taking transform the position dot x minus one point five f. I say plus 1.5f because we are going from the right to the left and we need to add to the right um, of the position of our enemy target, of our enemy to attack. Don't forget to save the script and go to the battle state machine script. In here we need to go and take our, away that debug.log line we just needed or used to uh, check if we are anyhow going into the perform list with that hero. Uh, or with any hero. So we can basically do the same stuff as we have done in this part in here. So at first we go and get the uh, hero state machine instead of the enemy state machine from the currently um, for from the current hero in the performer list at position zero. So we say hero state machine HSM, which is just going to be short for this one, and we catch all that information as we have done in enemy already too, and we say performer dot get component, and now we add the com or the, now we add the component hero state machine, which is over here, two brackets, whoops, and end the line. In the next one we say HSM, which is our catched hero state machine script. Um, and, and here we can say our enemy to attack instead of hero to attack. We say um, is going to be in the performers list at position zero and the attacker's target. We choose by clicking the button and saving in that um, in the. Oh, let me see where we change or where we store this. We store this in hero choice, as which is of type handle turn. We just passed into the perform list. Okay, and the last one is we need to start or basically activate the turn state action in the hero state machine too. HSM dot current state is going to be equal to hero state machine turn state action, and the line saves the script. Let's go back to the hero state machine once again. We just started the action turn state from the battle state machine, but we didn't do anything in here. So we need to start the coroutine time for action or time to action. I don't know. So we say, oops, start coroutine. And the coroutine we just looking for is time for action. Like this. So now we start the coroutine and when we are going into the action turn state which will be handled from all, all over the battle state machine and start it in here then the time for action um, I enumerator is going to get started. We'll do all that stuff for us like animation animating to the position of our enemy we have chosen by the buttons in the last part we return to our um, first position um, and then we go and process once again and only then. So don't forget to save the script. Make sure battle state machine is safe too. If not, please do so. Otherwise you might get, uh, might lose something in here. Okay. So then we will go over in the perform action state, which is already done from the last video. Oh, I, I don't know, a couple of videos ago, which is basically just our idle state in here too. And that's it. 
So now we need to check if we have done any problem, uh, any errors and all the other things, if anything is working in here. Um, yeah, so let's get started and test this one out. Our bars will be film. Then we will see this guy is going to be the first one in the list. So we can, uh, uh, in our heroes to manage list, we can say now, okay, we want to attack and we want to attack maybe enemy one. By clicking that, we just, as you have seen, push, push that hero in the perform list. He will perform the action to enemy one. We'll go back right now and then he will start processing once again. So we can do the same with the upper guy. And while we are waiting, the enemy of course will attack too. And nobody will attack when another guy is going to attack. So this will all work one after another, like a turn-based battle system as I just, yeah told you we are going to produce. So this is basically how the Final Fantasy battle system is going to work, or the Final Fantasy VI uh, battle system, I mean. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the turn-based battle system. The only things we don't do, or we don't have right now, are spells, attacks, magic, um, eating items, using items, whatever, and healing. So this may or this will be part of other videos I'm going through. In the next part we are going over and do actual damage and try to get into um, yeah, killing somebody if the hero dies or if the enemy is going to die. What will happen after that? So we need somehow how to win the battle, how to lose the battle and later on we may go over and create some small world map or anything and see how we can get into that battle. Maybe with some camera stuff and so on, we might need to change something um, for that one too. But the basic of the turn-based battle system is already done. So again, in the next part we are going to take damage or creating some damage stuff and of course um, creating some attacks we can basically use instantiate or actually not that but we will uh, create new instances of them and we will produce I don't know what yeah kind of damage and we'll try to get rid of the all the enemies and of course the enemies will try to get rid of the hero at, um, characters what you also may notice is that the speed of the enemies are pretty high so you may want to go over to the enemy state machine and set the maximum cooldown to maybe 10 seconds. So uh, they won't be able to overwhelm us. If you want to have them not start at zero cooldown, then you may want to do the same as we have done in here for the current cooldown of the hero state machine. So you can say they can they won't start always at zero, but they have the possibility to start randomly between zero and any number you want, or basically two numbers you want, floats of course. So yeah, with that said, I will end this video right now and we will see us in the next part where we do some damage to each other. So stay tuned and see you in the next part and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Feel free to ask me anything about that stuff in the comments below the video and of course um, yeah, rate this video and sum this one up if it was in any way helpful for you. So see you in the next part, bye bye.